Putek Lips at 120. Zumi God, Hello Bloods, for two. For the week of July 19th, 2007. All right, gentlemen, let's get freaky! Hey everybody, just to let you know, the grave mine must have been jamming our signals because my voice gets all freaky part way through this. Hope it doesn't happen next time. So everybody, welcome back to another episode of Pod Tacular, the unofficial Halo Universe podcast. I'm Fumo Jive. I'm JVB. And I'm Laird. Do again. Laird. <laughs> <laughs> the angels sing. Laird, welcome back. <laughs> yeah, it was uh, fun to be back again. Wee oui, wee. Oui. You are back up to the episode. Part two. Part two. That was yeah, the best well, French accent ever, man. <laughs> <Go see. laughs> I didn't know you were from France. Wow, it's good to know now. Yeah, Sweet. yeah. Many of those special talents. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, we're going to continue where we left off last week with all the uh, Halo 3 news that came out of E3. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, we did warn you last week that it was an enormous amount of information. So, we're going to continue, especially focusing on the trailer observations. The enormity will continue, definitely. Enormity. Massive. Guy All right, so we're going to start off... <laughs> <laughs> we're going to start off with Killazilla in his house. And uh, he, he, his submission focuses on the trailer. And uh, he says... We see Master Chief and Arbiter working together, but at some time, uh, they're also against each other, pistol to the face. I'm guessing that there are enemies before, be- before, because of their past. Master Chief uh, barely beating Arbiter in first strike, only winning because he forces the Arbiter into an escape pod and shamming the Arbiter by destroying Halo. What? Uh, I don't and, quite uh, understand that. How's he shamming him? Oh, by destroying, he's he's uh, screwing him over by destroying Halo and the first Halo One. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. He also noticed uh, a new um, equipment icon and a fourth grenade slot. Hmm. The equipment has been speculated on, and is guessed to be radar jammer, only because it's the only equipment we know we know of. That wasn't in the beta. Could be something else, too. Uh, the fourth grenade slot is a mystery. I personally believe it to be a forerunner grenade, maybe electric, electrical based. Yeah, they, they in the uh, joystick observation video, um, he talked about something equivalent to a flashbang. I forgot the exact right. name of it. It's like sparks and some kind of. Yeah, sparkly thing. <laughs> it got sparks in it, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I'm going to sparkle you. No, <laughs> scope, sparkle, <laughs> sticky thing. <laughs> um, he goes, I also believe that there will, uh, we will see forerunner weapons and vehicles in the final game. Two, we have a ton of weapons, but most of them are for clones of another. Plasma rifle, SMG, Spiker. What I believe the forerunner weapons will be are entirely different kinds. We already, We are already... Have the Sentinel beam, which has no other weapon like it. What? Okay. This this um, forerunner are, weapon. Yeah. Here are my ideas. A Tesla cool uh, coil-like weapon that shoots a short-range stream of electricity. A pulse rifle that shoots tiny balls of energy. Some sort of explosion. Explosive Whoa. weapon. Yeah, explosive weapon. Excuse me, sorry. No, it's <laughs> a cartoony ring. And buildings in space, I believe, are number one, a halo. I have always believed that all the halos are different, and this one seems more of a crescent. The place uh, the the pelicans are flying towards is not the ring, but the planet uh, it orbits. The buildings on the horizon, I believe, are forerunner ruins or or working forerunner city. So they're Not talking really about that because... portion in the uh, in the Halo 3 trailer, right? The single player yes. trailer. Mm-hmm. When the yes. Pelican and Johnston and and Master yeah, and Chief Master are coming Chief. down. Mm-hmm. And he's behind the ODSTs and that are flying. That's in. right. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. They, 
even uh, on the Pawtacular.com forums, this, you know, stills of a, this out-of-place looking figure that's in the in background. Space. Yeah. yeah, it's purple. It looks like, well, like I, I don't know what. I, I kind of <laughs> speculated on, I you know, first when I first thought, I was thinking, you know, that's Earth, but then I saw the thing in the background. And then the other thing I was thinking, well, maybe this is the uh, original Halo 1 ring that broke up. I mean, if you think about it, look at it in the background, it curves, and it's jagged, right? I mean, mm -hmm. it could be a section that's still functioning from Halo 1. I don't know. That that was one of my theories. Mm -hmm. The the Alpha Halo or whatever you want to call it. Yeah. Well, I mean, it definitely looks out of place. I mean, that's one thing I can say. So, yeah. who knows? Maybe that's... I mean, you said that was an alpha build or something? I don't know. Anyway, so, um... He uh, also says uh, nothing really important but kind of cool that uh, he found at the 1 minute 15 second mark in the trailer, you see... One of the Project uh, Prophet holograms. The model is a lot cleaner and better looking than the Halo 2 version. Well, I mean, that's a given. But yeah, you're going to definitely, uh, I can foresee, foresee uh, plenty of those uh, sprinkled around the game. Mm -hmm. You know, they're going to be talking trash, calling you a nub. And talking stuff. stuff. Yeah, talking stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so... Yeah, yeah, I mean, uh, you know, there's a lot of things in that video that people were observing, and, you know, like always, we enjoy doing it. For sure, man. Hey, speaking of which, let's kind of go through that video a little bit of, of some of the things that we noticed. Um, mm -hmm. One of the things is, like he was saying, the equipment, there was a new equipment type that kind of looked like a capital D, okay, and then, like, yeah. that has uh, flipped around backwards, fallen over, and had a... Um, a, like a dot in between the uh, line. I know that's kind of hard to visualize, but uh, you'll just mm -hmm. have to see it probably on the interwebs. It's all over the place, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, it, it's definitely, you know, to me, it, it it seems like that would make sense to be the the uh, radar disruptor as far as like, uh, yeah. you know, making that to where there's yeah, the like lots jammer. of dots all over the place. Yeah, radar jammer. So that seems like a good... A good uh, that seems like a good icon for that, really, because it's kind of like a a cone of 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 radar that goes on. Yeah, yeah, it's it's. I mean, we haven't seen it in action yet, so yeah. At least we have something to look forward to that wasn't in the beta, as regarding to the deployable weapons. So I mean, and there's that other thing, right? That was the uh, the the four slot on the grenades. I mean, grenade type. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I honestly. honestly I think it's going to be a 400 grenade, to be honest. Yeah. Because, I mean, we've, we've got Covenant, we've got Human. I don't think it's going to be a flashbang or a smoke grenade. I look to it to be a 400 grenade. Maybe it'll be some kind of grenade that specifically defeats the Flood. I don't know. Mm -hmm. hmm. Be interesting. Maybe it'll be a... Maybe it could be an antiviral grenade, or not antiviral, like a bioorganism grenade. You know, you throw it, and it, or you know, uh, sorry, uh, bioorganism, bioweapon grenade. You know, you can throw it. Hmm. Maybe it melts. You know, the flood or something like that. Hmm. Something cool. Yeah. I don't know. It, uh, that's another theory. I mean, if you're gonna fight the covenant or not the covenant, the uh, the flood. How you know you can, you can? We all know that kinetic weapons are bullet, you know, the, the guns the humans use are more effective than energy weapons. Yeah. I, and we know that the uh, the Forerunners aren't using kinetic weapons or, or guns, they're using energy weapons. I just see them using, you know, with all the research they've done on the Flood, they'd be using bio, bio weapons against them instead of, mm -hmm. you know, burning them or whatever they're doing. Yeah. Yeah. yeah That's just my theory. So yeah, some of the other things you guys <laughs> noticed um, with the Halo 3 uh, footage, the single-player footage, um, what were some of the other things that really stood out to you guys? The the Warthog that had the uh, the uh, two guys in the back that was like a troop carrier transport vehicle, I guess, or mm -hmm. yeah. with a turret yeah, removed. Like two, two guys in the back. Uh, yeah. yeah, it looked like a, it looked like a caged... Uh, it was aged in closure where it was like, I believe it was like two Marines sitting in the back. 
Yep. It's your one of the other. Sorry. Mm -hmm. One of the other cool things I liked is when you you can save that marine that was being held up by the the buggers or the whatever the hell yeah, they were called. Yeah, he, he shot the guy and he dropped down. Right. I, I like that that you could you have to. See, that's what I was talking about earlier in the previous show. Maybe that marine that he he had to save or he shot out of that. Maybe that marine's gonna do something later to help the chief in the game. And if you don't do it, the game changes like we discussed dynamically. I mean, maybe he's not that important a character, but that's kind of what I was talking about. Like, If you don't save that guy, what happens? What's the consequence of that, right? Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Yeah, for Definitely. sure. Man. It was cool so, to see that, you know, they, and that and that goes along with the um, with the civilians in the game. You know, you're trying to save people from from this kind of stuff. You know, it's it's more than just about you and you versus an entire, you know, conglomeration of, with the covenant going on uh, of aliens. It's about you and saving the entire human race. So that just kind of goes to reinforce that, and I think it's cool that they uh, find ways to represent that in more so than just, you know, you're a human and you're going against the covenant. Mm -hmm. I think yep. one of the other things in the trailer is when we see Master Chief, the Arbiter, and another elite in the background with Cortana kind of all freaking out with a headache. Um, mm -hmm. I think they, they're they not on a Covenant ship. I personally think, and this is my theory, they've gone to rescue her, and that's how they're going to get the Flood involved in Halo 3. They went back to high clarity, and they go to rescue her, and she's just still having some kind of screwy nightmare or not nightmare, but all the data she's collected while there for the period that she's been separated from the chief. If you know the Halo books, you know that the AIs only have short lifespans, and she's mm -hmm. pretty much on. I thought you were rampant. That's right, because in Halo First Strike, they're concerned that she's going to be going rampant, and they start doing checks on her and all that kind of stuff. So that's mm -hmm. one of my theories. They go to rescue her, and she's just that almost at her point where she's gone. I think, personally, Cortana's going to die. That's Someone's going to yeah. die, and I, I think, honestly, it's going to be Cortana that's going to go. Wow. Yeah, well, we all know that they have a seven-year lifespan. So. Yeah. And, hey, it, you know, Bungie's magical number is seven, right? Dun, dun, dun. Dramatic chipmunk. But, yeah, um, yeah, there, there was, there was um, a lot of... Uh, you know, interesting things in, in, in that trailer, and yeah, I mean, they they had like uh, was it track Traxon written all over the place? What was Trax or Trax Ox or whatever, something like that? Which is um, yeah. in relation to Marathon. Yes. Yeah. Marathon too. So yeah, I mean, those were like plastered all over the place. There's some things that I noticed a lot of people. Who said to comments and all that kind of stuff haven't mentioned? What about all the cool space battle stuff and and all the cool like the 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 longsword fighters crashing because oh, of that yeah. turret and stuff? No one has mentioned that. Just scrolling through the things that we're reading, no one has mentioned that. What do you guys think about all that stuff? Finally, we get to see this stuff done professionally through Bungie, not just the movies I make or other fans do, but now we get to see the stuff that we read about in the books. Yeah. What do you guys? How do you feel about that little slot, a little touch that we got? How do you guys feel on that? Mm -hmm. You know, seeing a long sword, yeah, seeing I mean, a group of long swords in more than just kind of an escape pattern, you know, yep. it, within mm -hmm. with from Halo One, is just is really cool. You know, seeing them in more of an attack, uh, uh, you know, situation where they're trying to you know take out Covenant, with, like overhead, you know, and that just like I said, that just. I keep saying that over and over, but that just goes to reinforce the uh, the sense of urgency that it's more than just yourself, you know, that it's an entire army that's fighting the covenant. So that kind of thing is is really, it just really goes to increase the uh, the drama that goes on that that this is a you know human versus covenant kind of entire race kind of uh, large you know, feel where it's, it's, where it's a, a desperate situation. It's us or them kind of deal, right? Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, absolutely, and you know it's you know the human race and. Everybody, I mean, that's the last offense, you know. And because once once Earth is gone, where do you go, right? <laughs> oh well, obviously, but yeah, I mean, in the game, in the end of Halo Two, you know, we were all, you know, pretty much knew they were going straight to. They found Earth, and you know, everybody was running, you know, to get back. And 
No, but for me, like the the thing is, once or one Earth is gone, where can humanity go? They've wiped out everywhere else. I mean, this is it. It's either we stop them at Earth, or we're they're screwed. We're screwed. Oh yeah, right? forget yeah. about it. You know. We can't <laughs> fail. That's all there is to it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do or die. No kidding. Hey, well, he mentioned uh, something about the marathon Durandal game coming. Mm -hmm. Why don't we uh, move over to that? Um, he was t okay. Let's move on to one from Storm Phoenix Two, who towards the end of what he says, he mentions there's Marathon Durandal for the Xbox Live Arcade. I never played Marathon, so if I decided to play it, it'll be the first time I've played Marathon. Still, from what I've heard and from what I've seen, Marathon looks like a great game. I'll definitely be checking it out once it's released. And shoutouts to Recky uh, at Podtacular and Fumo JB. Um, and shout out to Godfrey hey. and Gamertag Radio for bringing us great E3 coverage. Thank you, Godfrey. Mm -hmm. As well as, me spo as being yeah, sponsored by EA to do so. Keep on fragging trucks. Right yep, on. they're definitely uh, doing that thing over there. But yeah. yeah um... Now, have you guys played yeah, Marathon? Guys. Either of you guys? Yes. I, I played the, the first, first Marathon on my old color classic. Uh, mm -hmm. Fun, fun, you know? Yeah. Run in with like it's 33 megahertz of processing power and eight <laughs> meg, ten megs of RAM. That's Ooh. all you can put in it. Woohoo, baby! Hot Upgrade. stuff. <laughs> Upgrade. <laughs> um, I've played. You know, I played. Um, once Bungie released. Um, I mean, yeah, I know you could get it for PC and stuff, but Bungie released it uh, a while ago with uh, new updated texture packs that the community had built for Marathon. Yeah. And I, I started cool. playing it a couple years ago. Um, and I'm really actually looking forward to being able to play it with people on Xbox Live Arcade now that I've kind of like stopped the PC gaming and or, you know, computer gaming. I'm pretty much a casual console gamer now. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. I'm and, there, man. I mean I played uh I played Marathon One myself a little bit. Um I, I at certain points I got a little uh, frustrated and confused with it. I mean I know it has a great story with the with an AI going on, a computer AI that goes rampant. And there's a similar Durandal, thing going on with yep. that and a and a uh, a group of aliens that gets together and, and combats the human race, you know. It's a similar kind of thing actually when you when you uh, compare the two. But um, you know, of course it's got some some a little bit <laughs> tough graphics that go on with the whole thing. I know I've seen some of the footage for the Xbox release version and it's and it's a vast improvement of course. Um, you know, it's it's gotta be in H D and everything else, so but one of the things that's a little funky is the is the usual marathon reload animation where you ha it's like a slideshow going on. You have gun here, gun here, you know, put in clip, mm -hmm. gun back. <laughs> yep. <laughs> but that's like back the way it was, you know. So it's it's cool. Maybe that's kind of a, a rehash to the way marathon was, and it just kind of brings you into the field. But it's definitely got a, a good story going on, and it's and it's cool to um, you know to bring you back to those to that. Uh, the beginnings of, of what Halo was. Yeah. Yep. So it sounds and like not that's... To mention, Go ahead. Not to mention all the weapons, or there's some similar weapons. You've got the the same rocket launcher. It's the Spanker, and then the... Uh, you know, it's the same Spanker. one. Yeah, and then you've got the uh, pistol, which is got a zoom, like Halo 1, you know, and... <laughs> well, and of course the marathon symbol everywhere, and, and it's in Halo as well. Yeah. So I don't know. I'm I'm still always under the theory that Bungie's always said Marathon and Halo are two separate universes, but yeah. I'm still under the impression they're somehow getting connected. Somehow they're going to yeah. connect the two. I I just know they're they're going to do it somehow. That would be cool. Mm -hmm. And of course you got Frog Blast the Vent Core, which is uh, you know part of uh, Bungie's kind of mythos that that comes on when you know you see certain quotes here and there. That came from Marathon. Actually, they they were trying to find like someone that had gone crazy due to uh, some kind of interaction with aliens or the AI or something like that. That was a civilian, and that's one of the things yep. they say when you interact with them. They say Frog Blast the Vent Core, which is like some random thing that a Bungie developer came up with uh, at the moment that ended up sticking and going into the final game. So you know, <laughs> that's one of their saying. So you know, because of that, you kind of. Uh, you know, got part of the mythos that goes in. So, you know, that it occasionally finds its way into the Halo universe, but things like that kind of go back and forth between Halo and Marathon. So, it's, it's kind of cool to see some of the some of the relation that goes on there. Yeah. Oh yeah, you definitely recycle your ideas and improvement. Hey, I mean, improve them eventually. You know. 
mm-hmm. with, with, with uh, you know, better technology. For but sure. Yeah, um, back to, you know, more observations, some of these pictures. Um, I was looking at one just now where Miranda Keys, uh, remember there's a scene where she's holding up two guns. And yeah. the brutes, the three brutes mm-hmm. that are in the background. Yeah, the three brutes are actually surrounding her. So. It, it kind of looks like the, uh, the place where she got the key, actually. If you mm-hmm. look at it, because there's the broken kind of, uh, uh, sorry, forerunner thing that's behind one of the brutes, and it looks like where her and Johnson, you remember with the, where she was about to fall and she got the key, it looks like one of the uh, devices or the mm-hmm. the big guard uh, guard sentinels, whatever they were called, I'm sorry, can't remember their names, they had like the rockets and the needlers and the shields and all that, the yeah. big ones, that you could pick up like a tank and destroy it. I don't know, man. I can't yeah, so that 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 means she gets captured, obviously, and maybe she takes out the three brutes. Who knows? I mean, that's for. Uh, I mean, going based on the story, you know. Yeah. That that would be a lot to ask. She's gonna chuck Norris them all upside the head. <laughs> Roundhouse kicks. Yeah. <laughs> and there's another picture um, that's been floating in the net where you had mentioned it earlier with Cortana um, like uh, where, where it looks like she's sick there's a picture with um, one, uh, two, two elites Master Chief with two elites um, one of them is obviously the Arbiter and it, there's another one in the background um, uh, what was the name of Half Jaw um, excuse me no, oh, sorry, I thought you were going to mention Half Jaw or whatever, the guy with the missing jaw. Well, that's, oh, it could be him. I don't know if it's him. That scene you're talking about back. is the one you were talking yeah, about that, from before, the, when they're around the, yeah, table, where I the think lighted that, table, that Cortana's like, she falls, she grabs yes. her head and yeah. falls over. Yeah, That's mm-hmm. the one where I think my theory is they have gone back to high clarity to rescue her. Well, actually, um, there's... there's um, Oh, I can't believe I forgot uh, the little drone that, that flies around. Yeah, three, four, three. Uh, gil- yeah, guilty spark. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Is it, uh, it might be guilty spark. It's it's um. It's re- it's um projecting that that image. Oh, of course, in, in this picture, yeah. So, I don't know if maybe it's remotely. Maybe they're they're you know she's sending them a message. I mean, whatever it could be. Is it possible that she's still with the grave mine? You know. I didn't notice that she was projecting the image, okay. I'll have to go back and look at it closer then. Yeah, that's cool. I, I thought it was more like the lighted table that it was coming up from there, but you no, know, that's Yeah, cool. that's what I originally had thought. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes. Um, Interesting. I mean, yeah, I mean, I'm looking at a bunch of different ones, and, you know, it's it's, it's amazing that, that these, you know, some of these people can take some such nice quality pictures yeah. from a video. But it certainly helps, you know, especially what we're talking about. Yeah. Dissecting so, the whole thing, right? Yeah, that's 343, um, looking at this image. Because the, the last guy we met was, uh, he was orange, remember? Uh, mm-hmm. Whatever, 48, whatever, 458, penitent, tangent. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And if you look yeah. closely, that elite in the background has a battle rifle. Mm-hmm. You oh, look really? it in his hand, it's a battle rifle. You can see the scope there. Yeah. That's yeah, interesting. Because, so... like, you know, you'd think that even in Elite, but, like, by default, they would carry the uh, Covenant weapons because they're used to them, but it sounds like they're just kind of, like, interchanging weapons and working together. Yeah. And, and the, reason, like... the reason I think this is, is not at Halo or anything is because you remember when we when you played the, the level on High Clarity where the Doris to the um, the prophet's chambers or whatever had that symbol in in the in the background for the elevators behind that elite who we don't know who he is. Mm-hmm. If you look closely, it's the same thing. That's so. I'm I'm, I'm betting this is some kind of uh, I'm betting it's like high clarity or or some kind of covenant structure. Just just from the looks of everything in here. So is there anything else yeah. that we noticed in the uh, in the video that um, in the Halo Three campaign? Well, the, we finally saw a, a brief Back guns glimpse. Are being fired. <laughs> <laughs> we saw a brief glimpse of uh, the uh, brute chopper. Yes, yeah. in action too. Exactly. Yeah, in action. So I mean, that was pretty sweet. Yeah. I mean, it was very brief, but 
I mean, it just shows that uh, there is a, I mean, how big that vehicle is, because there's a, there's a, there's an actual picture of Master Chief boarding it, and he, you know, he looks like a little shrimp. <laughs> don't don't forget about there's one thing that I so far we've scrolled through and no one has mentioned, the new type of scarab. Like oh, yes. uh, it, it's 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 not the type from Halo 2. It looks like a digging kind of scarab. You know, it's much mm -hmm. more beefier too. Like the scarab in Halo 2 would just look like a a uh, bug. I mean, this one looks like you know it's a a digging scarab or or something like that or something else. Mm -hmm. It's a different type of scarab. Oh, yeah, that's cool. uh, yeah, it definitely has a, a nice uh, redesign. I mean, just like most parts of the game. But, um, I mean, you know, I, I got a feeling the more, the closer we get to the to, to August, you know, we're going to see more single player, um, you know, uh, pictures and, and bits of news and stuff like that. Yep. The one thing I'm good, I'm really glad so far, there's been no leak yeah. on, the, on the story. And, and you know you can kind of like get a little idea based on some of these pictures. I mean, one obvious, you know, uh, the one obvious uh, theme that I get by looking at them is that you and Arbiter obviously mm -hmm. are teaming up, and you know the brutes are you know the pretty dominant uh, force to be reckoned with here. But um, we we kind of knew that anyway, right? Yeah, you know, and, and you guys uh, are probably pretty clear right now that uh, Potacular is not interested in revealing any single-player details, even if they do get leaked. Mm -hmm. Like, for instance, uh, Team Xbox played through the entire first level, and we don't want to know about it, we don't want to tell you about it, we don't want to hear about it. <laughs> yep. Because yep. we're all for playing it, you know. That's like, I was saying on uh, Podtacker.com, that's like reading through game FAQs for some game that you've never played. What's the point, you know? <laughs> Go and buy you the game. Play the you game. Play it. Yeah, exactly, man. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we don't want to hear about. It. We don't want to tell you about it. Let's let's. We we want to hear about you know like gameplay mechanics and stuff like that because that's exciting and something we can look forward to. But the story is something like, for instance, uh, it's kind of off topic, but relating to um, relating that to Chronicles of Riddick uh, that we we're talking about earlier, JBB, is that mm -hmm. that's a, a game I really enjoyed. It's a great game. But after you played it once, you don't even want to play it again, because it's all about the story, you know. Yeah. So. Yeah. One, yeah, yeah. Yep. It's like, what's the point after that? It's, stories are like that, you know. You you. It's great the first time, but after that, you've already experienced the story, so it's there's no mm -hmm. suspense going on or anything like that. So we want to get the full effect of the story. So we're all about that. Exactly. We want to be surprised. And but and some some of the things that you were talking about uh, with Xbox. Uh, sorry, Team Xbox playing through is one of the stories they said um, of, and you're talking about game mechanics and stuff is I think it's really cool is the AI say you remember in Halo 1 and 2 you kill a bunch of grunts or jackals they run in terror, right? Mm -hmm. Well they still do that now but what they do now is they regroup apparently from the story and they all flank you to your right or their left and the, and the, the grunts will get behind the jackals with the shields kind of thing and you know re re counterattack you. That's one of the things I was reading uh, in one of the stories. Nice. I think that's awesome. You know, they, instead of just being fleeing little things to beat down, they'll actually come back and and attack you. You know, they'll regroup and and they'll counterattack. Oh they'll come wow! Come back in numbers. Pretty good. Um, I mean, sure, they're still screaming. It's the de oh, one of the other the other thing is what was really cool is I was reading about all the chatter that goes on between the marine, like the marines or the arbiter or whoever. Like they'll say something to the enemy, the enemy will converse back, and then it goes back and forth, back and forth, that kind of thing. Oh wow! Like you know, they'll you they'll scream your you know the demon he has come for us all or something. one of the grunts will scream that I think that's what, one of the things, and then a marine will. Scream something! Get back to planet, jackass, jackass, or something like that. Uh, you know, and you know it just goes back and forth, kind of thing. The audio clips. Wow. Cool. Yeah, that's, that's pretty. That's neat. pretty sweet. Yeah, I'm gonna go with uh one of the, the uh, newer submitters here. Um, Crunchy bosom cakes. <laughs> okay. Uh, sent in a uh, submission. Uh, goes, hey, this is my first time. Uh, 
uh, sending in uh, something to Potacular. But I've been listening since 90, 93, uh, episode 93. <laughs> I, I was going to say, it, man. <laughs> 93? Whoa. Wow. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> You know about Halo know. before it even came out? Oh my <laughs> god, dude. Dude, you're the messiah. So, um... <laughs> I'm kind of wondering about the direction of the game. <laughs> <laughs> I was 18. Hey, I had a vivid imagination. I still in high school, man. Everybody thought I was autistic. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, he goes, with Cortana losing the minor, uh, there is no one to talk to. Like there was in the previous games, this could lead to interesting dialogue being left out, such as when Cortana speculates on certain things in the game. The chief never really says much, and in other games, the characters talk to themselves to provide direction. Now nah, I don't know. I don't want to see the chief talking to himself in the middle of a fight or something. The arbiter might fill in uh, for that, but I doubt he's in every mission. Any thoughts on this? By the way, thanks for a great podcast. You're very welcome. I personally think uh, he's right about the Arbiter filling in, but there's no reason to think uh, Cortana won't be there. I mean, obviously she's not going to possibly be in every scene because she's with Graveline, but what's to say as the Chief gets closer to rescuing her or whatever that, you know, sometimes he doesn't receive a message or something like that. Or, right. you know, maybe he's going to be in contact with Marine Buddies or Johnson or Lord Hood or other Covenant elites, you know, like, there's, like, a bazillion characters. Maybe he'll run into a new AI or something, right? There's yeah, no reason. You, could be. Do you think they replace her with an AI? Uh, they, re, you know, they insert another AI? I don't know. I, I honestly could be. I mean, he is the Master Chief. He does get all the cool stuff. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> um, awesome. I mean, you know, there's no reason to speculate or not to expect Earth, you know, the place that's our home, to not have AIs, and, and on, you know, on most of the ships in orbit, there's AIs, I mean, they're not going to be at the level Cortana's at, but, I mean, there's no reason to not expect the Master Chief to have assistance from another AI. Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, he does have the, the new armor, so why can't he have a new AI? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. 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 Maybe this is where Durandell comes in, you know, to cross over the the whole marathon and, <laughs> and Halo <laughs> thing. Yeah. Who knows, right? Could be. You never know. Well, well that's another question. Go ahead. No, uh, real quick. In the in the uh, last year's teaser trailer, obviously his his armor was tan, and everybody had speculation. He was all um, cut up in that too, and now they've mm -hmm. taken that away. I kind of yeah. didn't like that. I wish they had left them beat up more and and had the the damage like they had. I'm kind of disappointed that they there used to be a huge gash across his like abdomen, and I always wondered was that like a plasma sword that hit, you know an elite tried to cut him with or what happened there? Mm -hmm. He had cracks on his visor and all that other kind of stuff. Do you think um you know the the, the costume well the his armor? Is replaced at one point, you know? Like, Who knows? Uh, that could happen. I mean, there's no reason to, to not. I mean, you know, they could just say, hey, Chief, here's some new armor. Put it on now. <laughs> yeah, why not? Yeah. I know. You look, you'll look look fabulous in this one. <laughs> <laughs> well, we all know about pri uh, that, that private, uh, uh, whatever, Jenkins or whatever. We all heard how he reacted. Yeah. It's like, oh baby, it's a Mark V or whatever. Every time you'd see him in Halo One. <laughs> exactly. All right. So we'll moving on to one from uh, Tubagabluba here. Hey guys, it's Tubagabluba. Well, I stayed up. <laughs> I stayed up to watch the Microsoft E3 press conference. Press conference, and by the end of the night, I all about pooped my pants. I thought the trailer was of the heezy and looked way different than the announcement trailer last year. But one thing I noticed was the Master Chief was shooting rockets at the Scarab. Yeah, that there was a green triangle on the Scarab, and it looked like it was the same green triangle used to mark where your teammate was in co-op. Now, since the gameplay wasn't filmed in split-screen, I think there's going to be Xbox Live co-op, which would rock. 
Now, the arms race video was just a sign to me that there would be a Halo movie would also rock. It looked pretty cool, but I don't know if it was really revealed any new information to us. So to me, the video was just an advertisement for Halo 3. And the Halo 3 Xbox, it looks really cool, but who's going to buy it? Almost everyone who wanted Halo 3 already bought an Xbox 360, so these won't sell as much as they could have if they had released this a month or two ago. Yeah, I don't know about that, man. Mm -hmm. I don't know, man. A lot of people ran out and bought the Halo Xbox, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And, the, and they're only limited editions. It's not like they're pumping out, like, a million Xbox, Halo 3 Xboxes. I mean, there might only be 20,000 or something. Yeah. And in the world, I mean, those that'll sell no problem. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yep. Speaking of the Halo 3 Xbox, uh, it's only got a 20-gig hard drive, uh, and uh, we don't know what kind of connections it has. We speculate it might be high def, but it probably won't be. Just, uh, you know, we don't know for sure. And hopefully it'll be the same price as the premium and not more expensive. Now, the Bungie podcast yeah, was saying that there's a lot of details to that as far as, like, the the uh, artistic details to it, that, that Bungie's art director has been behind a lot of the creation for that, and that, um, you know, it's it's... They're not, you know, they're going pretty heavy duty on, on like, all of the uh, artistic level for that. So, you know, because of that, I, I definitely expect a lot out of that. I think it's going to be really good, you know, in, in comparison with the, the same guy that was doing the Halo 3 Zune and, um, you know, some of the other stuff as well, obviously with uh, with Halo 3, the game. So, um, you know, there's a lot of good stuff yeah. to expect from that. And they also said it, it had HDMI support, which... Which is very, um, very good to hear. But I also heard, and you know, I'm trying to remember where I heard it that there might not be an HDMI cable included. So that that kind of uh, you know, kind of puts a, a little wrinkle to it. But nonetheless, you know, with an HDMI cable, you can get full 1080p support. So. That's, you know, that's like upgrading it a bit, but, you know, you also have the 20 gig hard drive, so, you know, it's going to have one thing that the Elite has and not the other. So, I mean, it's definitely going to be, you know, something that you're going to have to, um, you know, make a judgment call on. Yeah. Because the hard drive is even painted a different color on the Halo 3 mm -hmm. one. So, I mean, if you were to say run and get the honey 120 gig, it's not going to match unless you paint it up yourself. Yeah, so that uh, kind of... Uh, so they got, let's see. Collectors, it's a true collector's edition, you know. So they got the, the Halo console with the, with the, what is it, orange-red dot kind of thing going on on the, uh, on the connect button to the controller. Uh, mm -hmm. You got the, uh, the entire you thing. You got the... Go ahead. Sorry. No, I was just going to say another feature on it. It's the uh, little kind of uh, symbol for the UNSC on the side. Yeah. yeah. And it's translucent green, right? Yeah. Okay. As far as the plastic all around along the outside. And then you have the uh, the orange metallic um, CD-ROM drive going on, DVD-ROM. And then mm -hmm. on the top as well, on the hard drive, and all, then all the way around the hard drive as well. So then you ha kind of have the thing that, you know, it just, it just all works together. And then you have the Halo 3 Zoom kind of thing going on with the Halo 3 symbol with the, where you put in the USB devices at the bottom, you know, if your, hard drive, if your 360 is, like, stood up on end. And then you have, like, the different stuff that Lerb was talking about, like the different uh, graphical stuff going on on the side of the 360 case. So it definitely, you know, it looks really sharp, man. I mean, I think If I didn't looks... have a 360, yeah, I would have bought this... <laughs> yeah, I, wonder really. if I wonder if it's going to be bundled with the game. Oh, good question. I mean, that would, it would make sense that it would be bundled and, with the game. Did they, did they say if there was there any, be any kind of special Halo content on the hard drive or anything by that, any chance? Oh, well, I heard, like, some Halo themes or something. Yeah. So, I don't no, know. like, extra Halo videos or anything, maybe, or something? I don't know, man. Probably not, you know. Probably not. I mean, it's still kind of early because it's going to be released in September. Yeah. I gotta say that, it's like, probably... with Sorry. that and the uh, the 360 Halo 3 Halo 3 theme controller, controller, yeah, which looks really nice as well, and the headset, yeah. all of those look significantly better than the Halo 2 themed Xbox One. Oh yeah, oh, definitely. It's a major improvement. I mean, because I think a lot of it is because of the 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 um, 
it looks like it's like translucent plastic, green plastic still, but without all of the like the little um, the the plastic things that connect each other underneath. So it's yeah, like you just yeah. have like translucent plastic and then you know solid um, metal or plastic underneath that mm -hmm. with the Xbox 360 inset a bevel and everything going on. So it still looks. I mean, it looks super sharp. I mean. It's it's a vast improvement, definitely, over the previous one, and it, and it really looks like it, I think it's a vast improvement over the Zune myself. You guys think so? Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, I'm still uh, spiting Microsoft for not selling Zunes in Canada. Uh, when are we going to see it, Microsoft? I want to be able to buy a Halo 3 soon, but I can't. I have to yeah. like go through friends in the states to get it. Yeah, ain't that something? It's a pain in the ass. What's hey, up man. with that? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so I guess let's uh, continue. Yeah. Maybe we should All move right. on to the Halo Iris stuff, the ARG stuff mm -hmm. now. Yeah, let's do that. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Oh, that's, okay, that's i got to find that person that put all that information in. Yeah, a lot of all information. <laughs> Hold on, let me let me mm -hmm. scroll down to where yeah, it is. Yeah, it's Unreal, Unreal Chief. Oh, yeah. yeah. Hold on. Right. The Halo Iris has really been going crazy, and there's there's Unreal Chief really gives us, like, the detailed, you know, the detailed... Yep. Uh, uh, info, okay. which will kind of give an overview of hopefully. All right, so let's do this. Let's do this. Since I'll, I'll there take are, part of it. You take part there, of it. Yeah. Well, let's do a little. Let's do a little play here. Okay. Let's do a little play. Right. Since there are three characters, man one and two, one, okay. two and three. Okay. Yeah. We, we pick which man we want to be. I'll, I'll, I'll be man one. <laughs> uh, I'll be All man right. two, I suppose. All right. Yeah. And I'll be man three. Yes. <laughs> yes. So, Unreal Chief says, July 6, ARGS.bungie.org, utterly uh, Natty Hayes was found, flood containment control advertisements for hiring in various classified sites, Craigslist, Windows Live, Expo, Yahoo, etc. There has been a picture of the ad that includes a glyph that was found on various places, societies of ancient protests, first the Iris email, Adjunct reflexes section uh, second avatar. There was a phone number one triple eight seven seven eight five six seven two included in the ad. When first called, it said flood containment control was closed and told you to check back later. During the closure on July seventh through the tenth, the message for the flood containment control phone number was changed four times. These messages had a conversation of four people. Iris followers used uh, all of the uh, message form one big conversation. Download the whole conversation if you want, put into the podcast at arg.bungie.org slash downloads.php question mark ID equals 183. When the last final message was put up on flood containment controls phone number and put together, the other messages on July 10th, players found the conversation. From there, <laughs> players were led to halo dot, sorry, www.halo3.com slash <laughs> Five, four, six, seven K, where people would select their state and would see the previous uh, or various gaming stores in Microsoft Virtual Virtual Earth screen, Best Buy, Circuit City, etc. When you hover a mouse over the location, they would see an encoded message, a whole yeah. bunch of letters, K L T. Anybody yeah. wants to read this, you can you check the show, show notes. notes. Yep, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> then someone put three four six three five four six seven K into a cell phone to find out what they got and converted to find kiosk. Mm -hmm. When discovered, people dashed to their nearest store that was in the map. This is when Man Two, where we were all working for the moment, were simply hiding the data behind the false menu came in. And there was a false menu after the two options. Play Halo 3 vid and health warning in the Halo 3 menu. Selecting that played the Halo 3 starry night and following quote appeared one second after the message he puts on his helmet. There is no malicious intent, only the single-minded goal of survival. Belize, uh, sorry, Vin, Vin Gray. Vin Gray. Uh, Vin Gray. Uh, <laughs> Vin Gray. Sorry. After players, uh, sorry, after players Wikipedia the balls vinegar, they found out they had that he had made balls vinegar. Site for knowing <laughs> balsamic vinegar. Yes, <laughs> knowing this information, people went and started to code the message and found out that Halo3.com slash five four six seven K players quickly decoded it to find this out. Report, Extra virgin olive oil. <laughs> yes. Aww. Report every sixteen hours. 
and the plane, uh, the, the, what? The planet mistaken. is mistaken. The numbers, uh, be in, sorry, I can't read that. Maybe you should do mistaken. it. Oh, uh, I'm just saying lost. Yeah. Yeah, there report is, to uh, 06 actually. every 16 hours. Uh, Host hours. world raised, correction. Another planet is taken. The numbers being lost are astronomical. Report 23, host world raised, correct, concentration, uh, point 65, fleet losing control, following back, falling back, rather, rendezvous, uh, rendezvous oh, I didn't, at 9 I didn't Bravo Kilo to, Rome, down here. to Romeo 6. So, okay. I mean, the words are all strung together, so that's why it's... Sorry, with, uh, I saw the translated version. This is where the numbers came, became an IP, and the rendezvous point was 9 Baker, or sorry, 9 BK to RK. From that, uh, from there, a lot of players made a mad dash to 206.16.223.65, 9BK to RK, in the hopes that one of, to be one of the first hundred people to get a key and help unlock server 2. At around 6.12 p.m. on July 10th, server 2 was unlocked, and, and there were four files and a video. The video was about the flood, the files were two pictures, another star image, and a picture named Infestation, a transcript, and a video. Uh, for all information on these threads, uh, and it cuts off like yes. the Sopranos ending. Go to args. Uh, org for more information. Check the forums out. Yeah, definitely. You know, it's cool. It's kind of cool that we're we're given kind of a detailed overview of what's been going on with this. You know, because that kind of gives people an idea of how an ARG works. You know, what it's all about. And how it's it's all kind of like a series of cryptic messages that lead you to other cryptic messages that eventually lead you to more info about Halo Three, and some background on the story. You know, it's kind of cool to uh, to give that detail. So makes you wonder because uh, I don't know if you saw the Halo dot three Halo three dot com uh, comic that was there. Remember how they had yeah. the uh, the forerunners were here on Earth, obviously since you know we know the, the whatever the the Vice out in the, the underneath New Mombasa is the Ark or whatever it could be. Um, we know that the forerunners are here. We're here. Who's to say that they weren't here? And this isn't them reporting in our time, like you know now. Yeah. You know who's to say that they're not here right, right now? You know, obviously in the game. You know, not and not 500 years in the future. Who's to say that the flood control isn't? You know. The flood could be on Earth somewhere. Who knows? Yeah, it's definitely uh, type, the type of story that can go on even after the story arc is over with. Yeah. Yeah. So the next one is uh, Bianchi or Bianchi. Bamham the grunt. Oh, ba <laughs> oh, oh, whoops! Sorry, wrong one. Bamham. <laughs> so um, anyway, he goes, "Hey guys, wow, E3, <laughs> E3's Halo segment was." Not amazing. Beyonce. It was a zamming. <laughs> Add today or okay. Uh, anyways, I'd like to point out two things. One is that when they're going down onto Earth in the Pelican, it shows the cockpit. Many people believe that it reveals another Spartan. I say no, you truck drivers, then frag them. It is it is an ODST Marine. Duh. Oh. And number two. In the forest, when that Master Chief holds the gun to the Arbiter's neck, I think the Elite is dead. It just seemed emotionless. And, uh, <laughs> not, uh not sure. <laughs> what kind of stuff is that? Okay, he goes, uh, he, goes, Thanks, he, goes that, he goes that he is new here, and he's been listening since episode 95, and he loves the show. He goes, by the way, good luck with the squirrel belt. Well, thank you. <laughs> Squirrel belt. Did I miss that yeah. episode? Yes. Oh man, you missed it. <laughs> Dang, see if you choose your belly off, man. Uh, okay. <laughs> I'd rather have a beer belt, but that's me. Aww. You beer know, yeah. good. Can, belt, cans of know. cans of beer on the side, and it, hey, it'd be the new great. Instead of the foam dome, you got the the beer belt. You, you know, you just like, you can put more beers on it, and it, instead of having it up on your head and your head feeling all wobbly, you just have straws all from all the beers around like six or seven. Like you can put it like a six pack on your on your belt, and you can yeah. just drink it, dude. It'd sell millions. But dude, you could have a squirrel on your belt buckle. How cool is that, man? Yep. How about how about the squirrel the squirrel beer belt? 
The squirrel could run around oh. opening on the beer belt, could open the can. It, it trains, it's trained to open the cans of beer for you. Oh, and wow. And insert the straw. <laughs> oh, wow. Can you be my marketing team, please? Oh, yeah. Oh. We already had talks about that, remember? <laughs> yeah, squirrel in the beer belt. Beer belt. <laughs> that sounds good, man, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, all right. All right. So this uh, let's move I, on. I think we've covered I, just about everything, haven't we? You know, I think we really have. Uh, the only thing that we mm-hmm. haven't seriously covered is the uh, Bungie podcast, which has come oh, out yeah? recently, okay. which is uh, mm-hmm. definitely exciting, man. It's finally it's finally back. You know, it's been like nine months, and Luke Smith got hired, mm-hmm. which is great. You know, excited for him. Yeah. And uh, you know, it, since then it's been pretty much silent. It's like you know, hey, what's he doing over there? What the heck? <laughs> yeah. But yeah. It's, it's way cool that uh, you know they finally got that going again, and they figured all their uh, out all their technical issues, and you know I've got on the air, and, and uh, we're definitely excited for them. And, and dude, that was a good podcast, really. I mean, they they revealed a few things that we haven't already known, uh, like the first level being called Sierra One One Seven, and being a kind of a intro to how the whole whole game plays, and kind of a tutorial to teach you how the whole game plays as well within single player. And uh, mm-hmm. you know, they're talking about that being the forest level that goes on within these single player screenshots. So sounds cool. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And it's good yep. to, good to I look hear forward to listening to it air. after this, actually. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, uh, yeah, when, when everybody has a chance to go to bungee.net and uh, listen to their podcast. Definitely. Yep. Check it out. Well, I guess that wraps it. Uh, wraps it on up here, Michael. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah we're good. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, words. Send in your comments, etc. To particular. <laughs> At gmail dot com. Benny, Benny, are you watching? Benny, are you watching? Are you watching, Benny? <laughs> to keep hey, the man, show I got going. five kids to feed. Oh, oh man. I, I got <coughs> four kids to feed him in. No, no, you <laughs> know what? what happened to the do... Total Recall. <laughs> you know what I'm going to do? I'm, I'm, I'm going to do a remake of uh, MC Hammer's Can't, Can't Touch, touch This. Yeah. yeah. But I'm going to put Stop he... Whining. Do, 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 do. Did he ever have any other songs besides Stop Can't whining. Touch This? Oh, yeah, man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Here comes the hammer. Please, hammer, don't hurt him. No. Okay. So many. <laughs> That's right. We three. Pray. Pray. Too legit to quit. Oh, come on now. Yeah. Too legit to quit. That's where he did the horsey, and he was like, I heard he was like uh, complaining to like all the people that danced with him. He was like, No, no, cut, cut, cut. That's not how we did the horsey. We did the horsey like this, and he's like doing all this funky like horsey motion. They're like, what the yep. hell, dude? This guy's lost touch with reality. Oh, what the? <laughs> That's why now he's selling fries or dude, oranges thing. on the side of the freeway in, like, you know, <laughs> Los Angeles or wherever he is. Selling fries. He's working, he's working at Walmart. He's a greeter. Hey, but want some fries while you're driving down the freeway? <laughs> Come on, man. I'm too legit to quit selling fries. <laughs> Send in your comments, etc., to Potterhacular. Uh, at uh, gmail.com. We depend on your submissions to keep the show going. Keep an eye out for, at partacular.com for an invitation to send your stuff in for next week's show. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. Next. <laughs> <laughs> and you can call or listen to voicemail at 206-888-HALO and leave a Halo-related Halo related message. We play these back regularly on the Customs and Colon show. Which will return eventually. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, be sure to check us out at podtacular.com, and while you're there, check out the forums. There's lots of buzz about Halo 3 and other stuff. Thanks to all the people that contribute to Podtacular, whether it's working on the community or the site, contributing to our PayPal, or to help out with the server bill or hosting bill, or subscribing to the show and reviewing us, on, us in iTunes. We couldn't do it without you. And don't forget to head over to GamerCastNetwork.com where you will find other uh, of the great podcasts that are out there. The Gamer Talk Radio, Uncle Gamer Radio, and the GamerCast Network's very own video game show. Yeah. Well, until next time, I'm Fumo Jive. <laughs> I am J.B. Bizzle Nizzle.
And I'm Christoph Defka Laird. <laughs> Keep on Christoph writing Laird. Defka. That's right. Uh, Keep on putting mayonnaise in your potato chips. No, yeah. milkshakes. Milkshakes and, and french fries. Chocolate <laughs> milkshakes. Dip in your fries. Oh, yeah, with fries. Yep. Yeah. Yum. Yeah. That's, mayonnaise. That's when you're... When, that's when you're under the influence. You get those kind of creeps. You got your beer bell on, don't you, man? <laughs> <laughs> of course. You got the prototype. I knew it. Oh yeah, man. I was gonna. Th- I was gonna bring it to EA when you were visiting. Ah, <laughs> missed out. <laughs> I got my um, squirrel belt on, and he just made me a sandwich. Sweet. <laughs> oh baby, I want one. We should. Can, we we you should have a squirt. No, no, no. Beer belt, squirrel hat. Think about it. Just think about it. <laughs> Why am I thinking about this? <laughs> Just know, think right? about it. It's 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 there. I'm man. Actually beer belt, squirrel it. hat. Think about it. <laughs> Just think. think. About the it. think about the it. squirrel could be like you know a trained assistant. You know, like those helper monkeys. I suppose. Yeah. Squirrel, go dude, you got a squirrel oh, crawling over your body, man. Back and forth between your belt and your hat, dude. <laughs> Ah! Oh, whoa! <laughs> hey, squirrel's romantic. Go there. <laughs> Squirrel, when you go to the bathroom, can you please wipe? <laughs> okay. Oh, I get to get some to eat. Alright, that's good. Yeah, yeah. Ah, oh, look at that, look at that. We talked about that and he got hungry. <laughs> oh, baby. Mm. Just remember to keep that in the sh- Squirrel poop. Yeah. There's only one thing left to say. Okay. Oh my God. <laughs> me goods. And do it in the French. Like, do the opening Perfect. in a French. Awesome. <laughs> that was the craziest French accent I've ever heard. <laughs> I know. Like, that's that's awesome. Do, Keep it. That's good. What am I doing? <laughs> oh, for sure. Do me goods. Do me goods. You sounded like the, the French guy from The Matrix. Or whatever. Yeah. Wait, I'll have to piss it on. I mean, pass it on. I'm, really <laughs> sure. I'm sorry about it. I have to drop a load. GamerCastNetwork.com. <laughs> 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 <laughs>